Hello and welcome to lesson 14.1 in the Alice tutorial series. Uh, the lesson 14 series of videos is going to center on the idea of parameters. Now parameters are a really useful feature as it comes to programming and honestly you've used parameters in just about every program if not every single program that you've done with any sort of animation. For example when you use a move command you provide arguments such as what object is moving, how far do you want it to move, what direction is it moving? What's the duration of the animation? All of those things are parameters. But one of the neat things about parameters is you're not limited to just the parameters that Alice gives you by default. We can come up with our own parameters and use these as part of our world level methods and create animations that can take different objects for different durations or play different sounds, uh, all based on how you call the code. So that might seem like a whole lot right now, but just know that while parameters may seem a little daunting at first, you've all used them before in every single program that you've written. So let's start with lesson 14.1, which is going to be an introductory lesson on how to use parameters in your Alice world. So here we are in our initial Alice world, and before we start playing around with parameters and how they work, we're going to have to build a, a world to provide this demonstration. So let's go ahead and add some objects. And to start, I'm going to go to the People Gallery. And in the People Gallery, I want to add four individual uh, objects. So let's go ahead and have Josh, who will be one of our objects. And Natalie will be one of our objects. We'll kind of angle them here in kind of a little half moon shape. We're going to bring Natasha into the scene. And we're going to bring Nate into the scene. And these are going to represent some band members. Now each one of these is going to be holding a different instrument and we'll do some things with that. So to start though, we need four individuals that are going to be a part of the band that we're going to create. Of course, like any band, we're going to need instruments. So let's go back to the local gallery and select the musical instruments category. And I want some musical instruments for this, these band members to play. So for now, let's just get some placeholders out. Let's get a, uh, a keyboard. Oh, and that's going to be way too big right there. So let's go ahead and size this down just a little bit so it's more of an appropriate size. That looks about right. And for right now, just crudely place it in, in front of the correct band member. Actually, that might have been too small right there once it gets in front of them. Let's go ahead and make that a little bit bigger. And that's probably a good keyboard size right there. So we have a keyboardist. Uh, of course, we're going to need a guitarist. And we'll let, uh, I think that's Natalie. Yeah, I think Natalie is going to be our guitarist. So let's go ahead and move the guitar over there to Natalie. And position it just a little bit differently so that She's kind of holding it. That looks like a good angle for that right there. And we can make our fine adjustments later. What other instruments do we have in here? Well, I kind of wanted a, a drum set, but it doesn't look like I have a drum set in here. So let's go ahead and find... Let's go with a, a tr trumpet here. And I think this is Josh over here. We'll give Josh the trumpet. So let's go ahead and position this closer to Josh. Okay, and we'll adjust that a little bit later to make it look like he's playing so that instrument is in place. And I guess last but not least, we're going to need a bass guitar. So let's grab the bass guitar, drag it out into the world, and just like we did with the other guitar, kind of turn it over a little bit, and there we go. So each of our people are going to be able to hold their musical instruments. So now that we have four people and four instruments, I'm going to take a little bit of time to position each person so that they are holding the instrument correctly. Um, that's something that you can do on your own, um, but I'm going to go ahead and pause the video right here and just quickly get everybody positioned so it looks like they're holding their instrument and then we'll get started with parameters.
Okay, so that scene is done. The only thing I did um, off camera was I did go in to each individual instrument and adjust the vehicle property so that that vehicle is um, set to the person that's holding the instrument. That way, if in the future I decide to move that person, the instrument will move with it. So uh, the next thing I need to do is each one of these instruments is going to play a sound. So I'm going to head over to freesound.org and find a trumpet sound, a guitar sound, a bass guitar sound, and a keyboard sound. And I'm going to do that off camera because you've seen that before. Um, so head on over to freesound.org and find a quick sound effect, maybe two or three seconds each, that represents each instrument that you have in your scene. Once I get back from that, we'll be ready to continue. Okay, so I'm back from freesounds.org and I found the sound effects that I want to use. So I'm going to import these all for use and I'm going to import them into the world. So click on world and let's import the four different sounds we'll be using. So import, and I put these all in my sounds directory. The first one is the trumpet, so I'm gonna use this trumpet wave sound, and this is what my trumpet sounds like. So we have the trumpet set up there. Um, I also got an electric guitar riff, so we're going to import another sound. Go to my Alice sounds directory and get uh, guitar riff. So this is what our guitar is going to sound like. Uh, import one other sound. That sound is going to be the bass guitar, so let's get the bass guitar in there. So that's what our bass guitar sounds like. And last, let's get the keyboard in there. So let's go to our Alice Sounds directory and pull out the keyboard. And our keyboard is going to sound like this. So I've got all of these sounds imported into the world. And you can see each one of them is roughly um, somewhere between four and seven seconds long. And that's probably about right. Um, you can use whatever sound files you want, but I want them relatively short uh, for this example here. So with that set up, we have not only four individual band members, but we also have the sounds that each of the instruments can make. Now that our sounds have been imported, I want to create um, just a short placeholder animation so that these band members can maybe play their instrument and the sound can come along with it. We did world level methods in lesson 13.1, so if you're unfamiliar with creating world level methods, go back and look at that. But Make sure your world option is selected, click on methods, and we're going to create a new method. And this is going to be called uh, band play, I think is what we'll, we'll end up using as our method. So band play is going to represent our band members playing an instrument. Right now, what I'm going to want is just Josh. Let's animate Josh. We're going to have him move up half a meter and then we're going to have him move down half a meter. And this will just give us some visual representation on the screen. And click on my first method now. And let's drag our new world level method, band play, here so we can watch and see if Josh works. And he does. He's moving up and down. The next thing that I want to happen, going back to band play, is to have his instrument play while this is going on. So in a do together loop, I'm going to have Josh jump up and down while playing the trumpet. So if I go to my world properties, I can go ahead and have the trumpet sound play. So this animation is working pretty well. Now what I could do is go through and create four different world level methods, one for each of these guys right here. But that's a lot of work, especially if you get into more complex programs. Rather, I would like this band play method to work for whatever person I want to play and whatever instrument they happen to be playing. This is where parameters can be really powerful. You've got this create new parameter button right here, and the first parameter I want to create is one for the object that's going to be moving. Click on create new parameter. This is going to represent the object on the screen that's moving and playing the instrument or the band member. So I'm going to call this band member, and I want this to be an object type parameter. When I call this function, I want to pass in an object, in this case a band member, that's going to be animated during that function call. So the band member is the name of my parameter, I hit OK, and you can see I have this object parameter up here that uh, I can drag and drop into my program. 
Well, I don't want Josh to be the only one that's animated every time. I want to be able to pick any one of these objects to animate. So I'm going to take object band member and replace Josh wherever he exists. Instead of having Josh specifically moving, I now have a band member of my choosing because that's a parameter. Going back to world level method, I can see um, there's now a space for me to put in the object that I want to move. And so I can select Josh off of this list right now. And I can see the band member equals Josh. You'll also notice there's a change when you drag this world level method into your program. Just like when you, when you drag a move command into the Alice world, it makes you pick a direction and it makes you pick a distance. If I go to my world level method now and drag in band play, you'll see band member is listed as, an, as a parameter. I have to provide a band member every time I drag band play into the world. So if I drag band play in here, I can say I want Natalie to be the object this time. It's the same band play method happening once with Josh and once with Natalie. Let's hit play and see what happens. Josh and Natalie are both animated. In fact, I can animate any of my band members here by just passing in the name of the object that I want to move. Josh, Natalie, and Natasha will all animate in, sequ in sequence here, but right now they're all playing the trumpet. And that's no good for me. Go back to your band play method and let's fix that so we can also pass in the instrument that each member is playing. Create a new parameter and from the other list click on other and make sure you select sound. This is going to let us pick the sound file that is going to be played so that's not the trumpet every time. The name of this parameter is going to be instrument because this is going to represent the instrument that the band member is playing. You can see now I have an instrument parameter here, as noted by this little sound icon. And instead of playing trumpet 2 every single time, take instrument, and we're going to play an instrument. Now we don't know what instrument it is because it hasn't been passed along. But if we go back to my first method, you can see we now have a spot to put in the instrument that's being played. So I know that Josh plays the trumpet, so I'm going to select world trumpet. I know that Natalie plays the guitar, so I'm going to have her play the guitar riff. And I know that Natasha plays the bass, so I'm going to have her select bass guitar. Now that each of these objects has a sound file associated with it, our animation will go like this. You can see the only person that I don't have animated there is Nate, but I can animate him just like I did the other characters by t taking band play, dragging him into the world, and you'll see now band member needs to be selected. I'm going to select Nate off the list, the entire Nate, and once the entire Nate is selected, I'm now prompted to select an instrument. The instrument that I'm going to have Nate play is my world keyboard sound effect. So I hit keyboard, and now the animation should run giving me the ability to control the band member and the sound that plays. Now, if I wanted to, I could this is going to sound terrible, but I'm going to put these all into a do-together loop, and you'll notice they'll all do their method at the same time. So if I put these in a do-together loop, this is the animation you'll get. They literally might be the worst band in the whole of human history. But hopefully uh, parameters make a little bit of sense to you now. We're certainly not done practicing them. This isn't I think a video that can really be done justice in just one video because um, there's a lot more that we can do with parameters and there's a lot more practice you can have. Uh, another thing, let's disable this right here. 
you don't necessarily have to make the sounds match the animation. When I call in band, I might want to have Josh move, but I want the instrument that plays to be the keyboard. So this is going to cause Josh as the object to move, but the sound keyboard to play. As a programmer, these parameters give me a lot more control over my animation, and it allows me to reuse bits of, bits of code. I've now only used, what is it, three, three lines of code. And with three lines of code, I can control four band members and the sound files that they're playing, and I don't have to program each one individually. Parameters are a great skill to practice, and when you move out of Alice into other programming languages, uh, maybe you move on to Python, that's the other tutorial series that I do on this channel right now. When you move on to Python, parameters become very important. It's, it's nearly impossible to get through simple programs without parameters, so it's definitely something important to learn. And that's going to do it for Lesson 14.1. There is no Lesson 14.1 Challenge Program. Like I said, we're going to be doing a lot more with parameters, and we'll certainly have a Challenge Program at the end of the Parameters Lessons. But I think that's a lot to take off in just one video right there. That's, that's a you know, pretty big introduction to parameters. There's a lot going on there. So just practice it. Try it out with littler things. Uh, definitely watch lesson 14.2, which is going to continue giving examples of how to use parameters in your code. And of course, if you have any questions about anything that you saw here or how to implement them in your programs or things just aren't working out for you, let me know and I'll be happy to help you out. Thank you so much for watching the Alice tutorial series and we'll see you next time. Have a great day.